Spooksville, The Howling Ghost, Chapter 5, by Christopher Pike. Watch couldn't find Bum, so they ended up at the library. To Adam, the place looked more like a ghost house than a place for books, but he was getting used to such things since moving to Spooksville. Mr. Spiney met them at the door. He had to be the thinnest man Adam had ever seen. Tall and bent, he looked as if his skinny bones were about to burst through his wrinkled skin. He had large hands that looked like claws. He wore an outdated black suit with vest, and he bowed slightly as he led them inside his library. His voice, when he spoke, made him sound like an old fish. Hello, children, and welcome, he said. I do hope your hands are clean and your minds are not dirty. Would you like a glass of milk? No, thank you, Sally said quickly. We're just here to check a few reference materials. Sally Wilcox, Mr. Spiney said, peering a little closer. How nice of you to visit me again, he reached out with one of his claw-like hands. How are your bones feeling these days? Sally took a step back. Fine, thank you. We don't want any milk and our bones are all perfectly hard and strong. Can we please look at your old newspapers, and can you promise not to lock us inside the reference room? Mr. Spiney took a step back and eyed them with a trance of suspicion. What are you going to do with my newspapers? Just read them, Watch said, but I wouldn't mind a glass of milk. Mr. Spiney smiled and nodded. If you don't drink your milk, you're bound to get osteoporosis. He looked at Cindy and Adam. Do you know what that is? No, Cindy said, and we don't want to know, Adam said. Mr. Spiney huffed. Very well, but don't come running to me when your bones begin to crumble. It will be much too late then. Mr. Spiney led them to a dark room located on the second floor of the library, and then he went to fetch Watch's milk. Sally, of course, believed the milk would be poisonous, but Watch said he was thirsty and didn't care. Spooksville official paper was called the Daily Disaster. Adam was amazed by how large the obituary section was for such a small town. In each issue, it took up half the paper. Sally was right about one thing. Not everyone stayed for long in Spooksville. The cause of death was often listed as simply disappeared. Watch believed they should start searching for information about the lighthouse from 30 years ago. Do you know for sure that it is closed then? Cindy asked, helping him get the papers down from the shelves. According to Bum, it was about then, Watch said. What are we looking for anyway, Sally grumbled. They don't write about ghosts in the paper, not even in the Daily Disaster. I assume we're looking for the person who turned into the ghost that stole Cindy's brother, Adam said. He glanced at Watch. Is that right? Watch nodded. I'd be happy to find out who Mommy and Rick were, Watch replied, spreading the papers out on a table in the center of the small dark room. They searched the papers for more than an hour. During that time, Mr. Spiney appeared three times with glasses of milk for everyone. Sally refused to drink any, but Adam and Cindy finally decided to have a little so they wouldn't be rude. Mr. Spiney stood nearby while they sipped. Adam made a face and almost spit out his milk. This tastes like it's got sand in it, he complained. It's not sand, Mr. Spiney explained. It's calcium powder. It will make your bones so hard that even when you've been dead and buried for 20 years, they'll still be nice and white. He grinned at Cindy and Adam, and for the first time, they both noticed what big teeth Mr. Spiney had. You'll both make beautiful corpses, he said with feeling. Cindy set her glass down and coughed. I think I'm getting a milk allergy. Mr. Spiney finally left them alone. And not long after that, Watch uncovered a paper that had an article about the lighthouse. Double tragedy at sea. Last Saturday, there was a power failure at the lighthouse. Not long afterward, a ship, the Halifax, smashed into the reef off Springville and sank. Its captain was listed as Dwayne Pillar. Captain Pillar went down with a ship. His body has yet to be found. What caused the power failure at the lighthouse has not been determined, but the absence 
of a light was clearly responsible for the wreck of the ship. By unfortunate chance, the following evening, the son of Mrs. Evelyn May, the lighthouse keeper, was playing on the jetty besides the lighthouse when a wave washed him out to the sea. Five-year-old Rick has yet to be found, and the authorities fear he has drowned. Evelyn May was unavailable for comment. That's it, Sally exclaimed. Everyone looked at her. What's it? Watch finally asked. Sally was excited. Don't you see? The ghost of Captain Pillar stole Rick because his mother messed up the searchlight and caused the captain's ship to crash. It was his way of getting back at her. Watch nodded. That's logical. But what does this ghost have to do with Neil? Yeah, Adam said. He didn't with do anything to the sailor. Pressure. Sally spoke with strained patience. That doesn't matter. Rick was five years old. Neil was five years old. The sailor ghost just likes five-year-old boys. Also, note the time of day Rick was swiped. Near sunset. It was the same time of day Neil disappeared. Those are a lot of coincidences, Adam admitted. But I thought the old woman's ghost stole Neil, Cindy said. What made you think that? Sally asked. Because the ghost that grabbed Neil had hands like an old woman, Cindy said. She howled like one too. Since when do old women howl? Sally asked. Look, we have a clear case of a ghost snatching a boy just like your brother. It's got to be the same ghost. I bet my reputation on it. That doesn't exactly make you a heavy better, Adam muttered. Where do you think the sailor ghost is? Cindy asked, ignoring him. He probably lives out on his ship, Sally said, which just happens to be sunk underwater, Adam remarked. Watch was thoughtful, but that doesn't mean we can't get to the ship, and then it wouldn't have an airspace in it that a person could survive in for a few days. Neil could be there, and alive. They say that the Titanic had whole rooms that the water didn't get into, and that was underwater a whole lot longer than the ship. How do we get to the ship? Adam asked. And wouldn't we need scuba equipment? I have scuba equipment, Watch said. I've been diving since I was seven. But you can't dive alone in that shark-infested water, Sally said. It's not safe. I have plenty of equipment, Watch said. I'll take Adam with me. But I don't know how to dive, Adam protested. I'll teach you, Watch said. I have a diving certificate. You'll see. It's a lot of fun. What if a shark does come? Cindy asked, although she was clearly excited that they might find her brother. He can eat only one of us at a time, Watch said cheerfully.